So polynomial division is a really useful skill to have. I should stress that this technique I wouldn't use all of the time. However, it is very useful in certain situations. So when you're dividing a polynomial by something like x plus 1 or x minus 1, x minus 2, that's that sort of thing, it's a really useful, quick way of factorizing. But if you're dividing a big polynomial by something like a three-termed expression, so some quadratic maybe, you know, x squared plus 2x plus 3. If you're dividing by that, then this technique gets quite complicated. I think it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Anyway, I'll show you some examples and you can decide if it's worthwhile. Okay, here's a cubic and you're given that x minus 1 is a factor. It's very rare that you ever have to factorize a cubic like this all on your own. So you're told that x minus 1 is a factor. So you write x minus 1 and then you open up the brackets and here we go. So you start off by inspection, thinking, what do you need to multiply this x by to give x cubed? And we have to multiply it by x squared. And that seems okay. And then we think, well, well, by putting that x squared in, we've also given ourselves a minus x squared term, but we want plus x squared. So we had minus x squared, and we want plus x squared. So that's the difference of 2x squared. So what we need to do is add on 2x, because this 2x multiplies by that x to give 2x squared. So that 2x squared now adds with the minus x squared to give us that x squared over here, which we want. And then you do this again. So you say, ah, oh, but now this 2x is giving us minus 2x from this part of the bracket but we want minus 17x. So minus two to minus 17, that's minus 15. So we do minus 15 and just 15 because 15 times the x gives us the next one. Then that gives us the minus 17x. And now it happens that minus 15 times minus one gives us plus 15. So that is factorized quite quick. Okay, and this time you're given that x plus 2 is a factor. So here we go. And what should we do? Well, we start off by thinking, okay, x times x squared gives us x cubed. And then that also gives us plus 2x squared. Now we want 5x squared. So if we put plus 3x here, that 3x times the x makes up the difference to give us the 5x squared. Now we want plus 2x here, and then we need to remember that 3x multiplies by the 2 to give 6x. Now we want only plus 2x, so we need to subtract 4, because that then gives us this, 2x, and then the minus 4 times 2 gives you minus 8. And so that's the answer. Oh, and by the way, I probably should have said, you can then factorize these again. And perhaps you've thought about that. So this isn't the purpose of this video particularly, but you can then factorize these fully. So this would be, there we go. Now, instead of being given a factor, you may be given a root. And often you're just told two is a root and then find the other factors or find the other roots. So the thing about this is you need to remember a little bit about the factor theorem, and I'll just very quickly sort of summarize that, which is that if two is a root, then x minus two is a factor. And conversely, if x plus five is a factor, then minus five is a root. So we could write this as if x equals a is a root, that implies and is implied by x minus a is a factor. Okay, and that basically sums up what the factor theorem tells you. And the other thing to remember is that if a is a root, when you substitute that into the expression, you should get zero as your answer. After all, a root is where your function or expression crosses the x-axis, which is where the value is zero. So for example, we could just check here in this example that one, should be a root because x minus 1 is a factor. And we can check that very quickly by substituting 1 in here. So we put 1 in, we get 1 cubed is 1 plus 5 plus 2, and that's 8. And then you subtract 8 and that gives you 0. 
So it does work and you can check that with the four or rather putting minus four in and if you put minus two in. And if you ever have to do that, you just have to substitute those in and you can use a calculator if you want, but it doesn't matter. You just have to put that in and show it. Okay, so an example of one that's a little bit harder might be one like this. And you're given that two X plus seven is a factor. Okay, so we've got 2x here and we want to make that into 2x cubed. And we do that by multiplying by x squared. And then you think, right, 7x squared, x squared. Hmm. We want x squared, not 7x squared. So we need to subtract 6x squared. So instead of putting minus 6x, we're going to put minus 3x because that will multiply by 2x to give us the right difference that we require. Now, this gives us minus 21x, we want minus 17. So we need to add on 4x. So we plus two to give us 4x from here. And that also gives us plus 14, which is what we wanted. So even ones like this, which look a little bit harder, you can actually still do using this method. Now, I will show you an example of one where I probably wouldn't use this method, but it will still work. So I'll walk you through it and you can decide. I, I personally, I, I, I might not do this method, basically. Okay, so here it is and we'll have a go at this. So start off with it's quite an easy first step, x squared to x cubed, so we just put an x down. And now this gives us 2x squared and also x. So we have to be a bit careful with the memorizing everything here. So we've got 2x squared, now we want 4x squared. So let's add on 2 here because that makes 2x squared. So we've got 2x squared and 2x squared, that gives us 4x squared. And now let's look at the x terms. So we had an x from here and we had two times two x, which is four x. So that does give us five x. And then we had two times one that gives us two. Whew. So actually it, it's not too bad sometimes, it can work, but you just gotta deal with more terms to remember, which I'm not too keen on doing. Still, it's a useful resource to have. If you need to do a question really quickly and you just want to do it and you don't want to do long division, this can work.